Welcome to the Scottish Cranog Centre. My name is Frances Houston and I'm the curator here. We specialise in Scottish pile dwellings called Cranogs. In particular, one Cranog which was here on Loch Tay in Highland Perthshire, which was dated to around two and a half thousand years ago. So we tend to look at the Iron Age, the early Iron Age period of history. Our collections are varied. Uh, they tend to look at the construction of Cranogs. In particular, we have some fabulous tool marks that survive on foundation timbers, which you can see very clearly here. Um, but we do have other artifacts which very vividly bring the life of our Cranog dwellers to life. Um, and it is one of these very special little artifacts which is going to be the subject of today's presentation. Our ethos here at the Cranog Centre is that we are a diverse community with decision making shaped by our vision, mission and values. We believe that only by being a community ourselves can we best connect to the Cranog community of 2,500 years ago who left us their precious objects to find and care for. One of those values is that the abundance of knowledge, skills and expertise lies outside the organisation and that we need to connect to that to truly do our collections justice. So, one objective of our projects is to bring special items into the public domain with a sense of inclusivity, community engagement and so on. Our forthcoming special project focuses on this incredibly special and incredibly rare fragment of Iron Age cloth. We've called this video Journeys because there are several interconnected stories that are informing this project. Firstly, the Cranog Centre itself is on a journey to move to a new, larger site where we can truly embrace experimental archaeology and Iron Age building reconstructions within a strong sense of social justice. Secondly, our ancient textile specialist Jason has been on a journey of experimentation, learning and discovery, which you will hear about in this video. Thirdly, the Cranog community has evolved from a small and fractured group into an inclusive team with fulfilling volunteer opportunities and an apprenticeship scheme to name just two developments. And of course, our textile fragment has been on its own journey. This fragment of cloth is of hand-spun sheep's wool woven in a 2-1 twill weave and there is even a selvage which can be seen at one side. It has been submerged in the waters of Loch Tay for 2,500 years buried deep within the mound of organic material that was once an Iron Age Cranog. The mound was anaerobic and compacted, which helped to ensure the survival of this tiny piece. Our textile project will analyse this piece to see if we can establish the presence of any colour and to see if we can find out more about the animal from which it came. We will then attempt to replicate this 2-1 twill weave on replica tools. We will also create a new display in our museum and bring this item into the public domain for the first time since it was discovered. Hello, my name is Jason and I specialise in textiles at the Scottish Cranach Centre. When I first came to work here about four years ago, the textile area was actually a static space and it was really only used for events and nothing more. And so I had to start at the beginning. So I learnt how to card wool and I learned how to spin wool and I learned how to ply wool, all the basics of textile production. And what I realised during that time was I was slowly upskilling to the level of the people in the Iron Age. And then news of the textile project started. And so what I thought I was going to do was to kind of upskill even more, but do it in a very, very pure way. So I made an active decision not to find out how modern dyers mordanted and dyed the wool, but really go back to that point where there was an absolute absence of knowledge. And really for the first year, there was a lot of failures, but there was a lot of learning involved, approaching it in a very, very pure way and slowly upskilling. My role is that of public interpretation. So all experiments were live with an audience and all successes and failures were shared. I met local spinners and weavers when they were demonstrating at our events and learning different methods of spinning and plying plus tablet weaving. At this point my research started and I began to look into how our piece of textile could have been created. Questions began to emerge. How did Iron Age people interact with their environment to create textiles? What resources were available to them? What limitations did they encounter? 
How long did it take to make their garments in relation to other iron age skills, such as metalworking and woodworking? Did the seasons impact on such processes and how? And what did the people throw away? One aspect of our textile project will establish whether plant dyes were used to add colour. My own early attempts to use local plants as dyes failed systematically and I made an active decision to find solutions through my own working. In hindsight this was a good choice. The biggest learning happened when we made happy accidents. A good example of this is when wool was left in a pot of alder bark which had filled it with rain and to be honest forgotten about. After a month the wool had a light brown tinge. I dried it and a few months later put it into a madder dye pot. The resulting colour was incredible. I had stumbled across a way of using fermentation as a way of mordanting wool. This same process was discovered by accident by one of our apprentices three years later. As time progressed I met more skilled crafters, archaeology students and passionate enthusiasts from all over the world. The din and dance of learning that is created with the involvement of so many people has started to answer some of our questions about ancient textiles and of course beg new ones. These people who have become part of the Krana community have inspired and informed our textile experiments and so the cycle of making mistakes and solving problems quickened. Before long we were dying with a myriad of plants that were available to the Kranich dwellers of two and a half thousand years ago. And we also began to use other plants such as woad, weld and madder and getting consistent results. We became proficient in multiple fermentation dyeing methods. We understand the chemistry of the dyeing process. We became proficient enough to spin down to the same thickness of wool as our original fragment and we produced finished pieces of tablet woven textiles. We disseminate our knowledge to our visitors as we go along. We then built a warp weighted loom to test theories about the drilled stones in our museum's collections, which are commonly assumed to be loom weights. Another skilled crafter helped set up a loom and six weeks later we were starting to weave. We have planted a dye garden to demonstrate how we get from seed to color. As we've already said in this video, the abundance is always on the outside of your organization. So we visited the Royal Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh to look at their collection of lichen dyes and we made connections with a specialist nursery for the supply of our plants. Our apprenticeship scheme started in 2020 and the young people working with us asked many new questions which they solve in practical ways as part of their learning. Our whole experiential approach has been informed by hundreds of people over the last four years and it has created a vibrant, dynamic textile area brimming with ideas and enthusiasm and which celebrates collaboration and community, both inside and outside the centre. Over a period of six weeks I worked with a skilled weaver and volunteer from the States to set up a warp weighted loom with a tablet woven border. The looms seem counterintuitive to set up for this particular twill for various reasons such as having to snap the warp threads as part of the setup process, hence the length of time taken to get it ready for weaving. Driving this experiment were the stones with holes drilled from our collection, and we wanted to test what the process and experience of using such a loom would be like to weave our cloth. We successfully wove the twill, but it left doubts and questions as to whether this was the method of weaving used. We now seem to be leaning towards the idea that a warp weighted loom was not used to create our twill. And we got in contact with Penelope Walton Rogers, who is a director of the Anglo-Saxon Laboratory at the University of York, who suggested that we might use a two beam loom. And that's because our particular twill sits better on that kind of loom. We've also been in contact with Dr. Susanna Harris at the University of Glasgow, who will be running lab tests on our textile and interpreting that data. And what that means is that that opens up a whole new area of experiential and experimental research, which means that we can engage the public, we can generate the knowledge and continue to tell the story of the Cranach dwellers who lived on Loch Tay two and a half thousand years ago. The Covid pandemic has set back our textile project by at least a year. 
However, we hope that in 2021 we will get some results from the analysis of our fragment and then we can begin to source the wool, we can hand spin it and we can recreate the actual fabric and its weave on our replica looms. And this will be accompanied by a full and varied program of community engagement events, public participation, especially at the special events that we do here at the Cranog Centre. And what we want to do by 2022 is have our fragment on display uh, with full interpretation in the museum here. So it's been a long and a varied journey for this tiny little piece, um, but uh, thank you for joining us on this. If you want to know anything else about our textile project, please do get in touch and thank you for watching.